So I've had a pretty consistent question popping up over the last few years. Um, it's been uh, about where I stand on Second Amendment, but mainly the question is, do I carry when I ride? Do I carry when I camp? And for the past few years, I really haven't. I don't, I don't carry anymore. Um, I still have guns. I just have found it to be less comforting and more discomfort having to keep up with a firearm and i just started leaving them at home i haven't had a um, concealed permit i don't know three four years now just to, got to be such a pain in the butt and especially when i'm on the road camping going through different states i don't know what to expect um so the answer has been a consistently vague not anymore it's a pain in the ass it does not make me feel any more secure but all that has changed. Yesterday. And I'm locked and loaded now. And you know, the bottom line is those excuses were all real. They were all real. I, that's just pretty much the way I felt. But the one thing that I left out, the one thing that I consistently left out was the answer that might make people um, uncomfortable or feel um, like I was uh, being offensive or that, that, you know, and that answer is I just have felt number one, less threatened over the past few years. Um, I'm getting older. I'm not as, uh, as hyper aware of threats as I used to be. And, you know, I, I, I happen to be a giant, you know, I'm six, five, 300 pounds and I've just come to realize over the past few years that, you know, I'm probably going to be tougher than most people, but I didn't want to say that. I didn't want to say I'm tougher than you. That's why I don't carry a gun because I can handle myself. I didn't want people, I didn't want that to, I mean, that, that comes off sounding very arrogant and very, you know, only pussies carry guns. And I didn't want to sound like that um, because I really believe in second amendment. Um, but I never said that single thing but um the several incidents yesterday happening within a mile within a, just a few minutes of each other made me start to realize that i'm no longer that tough guy anymore i still weigh 300 pounds but i got one leg but anyway i want to share that story with you now and kind of give you my shifting perspective um and probably puts me back in the category with most Americans, you know, most Americans that want to protect themselves and their family, not going to depend on their brute strength, size, and their uh, black belt and jujitsu. You know, not everybody's got that. Let's get to the story of what happened yesterday. So I'm driving along, heading to the grocery store, got my peg leg and my crutches in hand. Driving along in my truck. Okay, it's not a motorcycle, but yeah, guess what? I can't ride a motorcycle yet. Um, but I'm in my truck, headed to the grocery store, and dude man up ahead of me pulls out. Just pulls out in front of me. No big deal. This happens all the time. And I'm thinking this guy's drunk or high or something. And I didn't think really anything about it. It's like, here's another one. And, you know, he jumps out in front of me and then just kind of sits there 10, 15 miles an hour all the way to the stop sign, which is another 50 yards away. And we get to the stop sign, the dude just uh, sits there. And as you can see, he's just kind of uh, um, just kind of sitting there. I, I don't think that you can actually see his hands going up in the air. And he's just losing his mind for some reason. Bees in his bonnet. I don't know. Um, I, I don't know if you can tell. But he's, he's coming unglued. And it's not like I ran up on his butt. Not like I was doing 50 miles an hour through his neighborhood. I could see somebody being upset about that, but I, you know, I, I let him in. Maybe he was looking at his rear view and seeing my mouth going like fucking dumbass. I don't know. I don't know what got him all wound up, but uh, he was really, really in a hurry to get out in front of me and then really wasn't in a hurry to, to go anywhere. So that usually kind of pisses me off. That's, I, and then he catches up to me and through the other neighborhood. I knew that there was, and I had a suspicion that something like that was going to happen, um, that he wasn't done with me. He was going to tell me, share with me his feelings about uh, how I violated 
his rights or whatever, whatever was going on in this monkey's head. Uh, but I was going to stop for gas just around the corner. And I was like, wow, I hope, uh, I, I hope he doesn't really cause a scene in the gas station. Cause, uh, I'm a badass. And all of a sudden I realized, oh, wait a minute. I'm no longer a badass. I'm a one legged cripple with crutches. And what am I going to do? It would be really hard for me to defend myself outside of my truck. So all these things started going through my head and, <laughs> and it just all of a sudden it started making me think, well, what the hell? I, all of a sudden I'm back in reality with everybody else. All the other Americans that were all pretty much vulnerable to the, to the thug, to the gangster, to the, to the outlaws, you know, the people that want to take your money in your life or just kind of, maybe they just got a little road rage going and you know, they're willing to die for their rage. I've almost been there myself. I understand. Um, but anyway, I pull into the gas station and there's only one pump open on my side and I pull into, I don't want to call this guy a thug. I think they were just stupid, but their pump they're they're parked three and a half feet off of their pump. And I had to squeeze in at an angle to get my truck in there even because they're so squeezed in. Well, it just so happens that my bumper is in their way now. So he starts waving at me and I'm like, back up. He says, back up. And I'm like, you back up. Y'all are the one three, three feet off the pump. I had to squeeze in here. It's like, I ain't backing up. So he backed up, went out. And that wasn't even the end of it. Before I even got out of a gas station, I had somebody else beeping at me. Um, just a weird, weird, weird within a mile. I've had three terrible reactions from people and, uh, and I'm not sure the last guy was even my guy. He could have been beeping at somebody else. He could have been waving at some, I don't know. All I know is he stopped to let me out of the parking lot. And as I, as I'm rolling out of the parking lot, I heard a beep and I don't know if that meant he was nice and kind enough to let me out. And I should have waved at him, acknowledged his kindness. I don't know. I don't know. Just all I know is I was glad to get across the river out of the freaking hood. <laughs> and I don't live in the hood. I live in a nice neighborhood. I had just that day I had to drive through the hood to get to the grocery store that I go to. Anyway. Um, so yeah, basically, um, I'm thinking for the first time in a long time about a scenario, you know, what could happen? The first guy following me into the, the gas station, getting out of his truck with a baseball bat, going to teach me a lesson. And then the second guy, you know, I don't know this guy. They, they were probably relatively harmless, just kind of couldn't understand why they had to back up a foot and then turn to get around my truck. Um, but it's just, I usually don't get that kind of uh, outrage, it, especially in that short of a time. Hell, if I had two of those results in, in an hour, I would be shocked. Because, yes, this is Tuscaloosa, Alabama, man. This is a nice place. Uh, apparently, it's not as nice as it used to be. But, um, yeah, it just uh, this scenario got me thinking and my feeling defenseless and vulnerable for the first time since junior high, man, I really haven't felt vulnerable for a very, very long time. Unless, you know, there's five on one. That's, that's a vulnerability, but I haven't been in that situation in quite some time either. But now I just got to figure out a clever way to strap one of these pieces to my peg leg. <laughs> So here's my question. How many of you guys carry? Do y'all daily carry? I don't know. I, I'm a motorcycle guy. I like talking about motorcycles. So when it gets too far off topic, I kind of like, man, eh, let's bring it back to the center. So try to stay away from guns uh, for the most part. But I would like to know how many of you guys are currently carrying. How many of you guys have thought about it? And, um, you know. The guys that are thinking about it, what, what do you think your next step is? What do you think that you're going to do um, as far as 
motorcycling as far as the rest of your life. Um, I, I think maybe this uh, Trump situation has got a few people thinking too. Um, how many more crazy people are out there that are looking for guys with MAGA hats or somebody that looks, somebody that's got a beard, you know, because everybody with a beard is a MAGA Republican, right? The people that are currently carrying, do you carry when you ride? And where does that go? Um, I've only got really one pistol that I've got set up. This uh, goes in the small of my back, this little clip here. This is pretty nice. That's how I used to carry it. It's a big, heavy pistol. This is a 45. You know, don't have a lot of rounds, but when I put them down range, if I hit something one time, I think I'll probably be in pretty good shape. Um, but yeah, that's my story. I just wanted to share it because it's a consistent question. People ask it all the time, and I vaguely answer, and now you know where I stand. <laughs> where do you stand?